Dixie here. Today I want to cover tips every backpacker should know about hiking alone. I am coming to you once again here in Alabama from the blanket fort because it's another brutal day as far as weather goes. But anyway, back to the topic at hand of hiking alone. I recently put out a poll on the channel community tab in my homemade wanderlust backpacking forum group on Facebook and to my Patreon community. And it turns out over 50% of the people who participated in the poll said that they prefer hiking alone to hiking with other people. So this is just to let those of y'all know who have been wanting to go out hiking, but you don't have anyone to go with. There are people out there who are backpacking alone and getting out on trail without company. So hopefully that and the tips I'm gonna cover today are your nudge to get out there and do it yourself. Starting off with tip number one, it is okay to not completely ditch the electronics. I feel like almost every time I mention listening to an audiobook, podcasts, or music out on trail, people lecture me that getting out in the woods is all about becoming one with nature and leaving technology at home. Now, some people are completely fine listening to just the sounds of nature and otherwise silence, but when you go on something like a six month through hike, or at least when I did, I started wanting to hear some other human voices, especially when I was on stretches of trail for quite a while by myself. Plus, for those folks who are just getting into backpacking who maybe are not used to at all spending time alone or with their own thoughts, having something to help them transition into it if they get a little creeped out can be a comforting thing. So I always encourage folks to have those audiobooks, podcasts, music accessible on their phone, even if it's in airplane mode, so downloaded. That way they can listen to something if they need to hear another human voice and not feel so alone. But with that said, I of course encourage people to put the electronics down as much as possible because I do feel like there are a lot of benefits to be had out in nature. That's something that studies have shown can really help with anxiety, depression, and just being alone with your mind, the trail as you're moving down it, and the sounds of nature can really be like meditation. But don't feel obligated to all or nothing with the technology. It's okay to lean on it some. Just a note on safety though, I do wanna say if you're walking down the trail listening to anything through earbuds, AirPods, make sure you only have one in at a time and I'd say keep the volume as low as you can but so that you're still able to hear it. That way you can hear your surroundings if you were to come upon a rattlesnake or there's a hiker that has approached from behind that's asking you to come by and pass. Tip number two is carry extra battery power. And what I mean by this is if you've already been backpacking and you know, hey, a 10,000 milliamp hour charger is always enough for me for a three day trip, so I'm not worried about needing any more. Well, if that's what you use when you're with other people, you might find that when you're alone, if you are leaning on your electronics a little bit more, that you're actually needing more power. Maybe you're using your headlamp for longer at night because you're a little creeped out by the dark or listening to the music as you're going down the trail. So I would suggest bringing a little bit more than you typically think that you would need. Tip number three, if you're going out to the woods alone, is tell somebody your plan. You should really do this whether you're with other folks or not, but especially if you're going alone, it's important that you let somebody at home that you trust <laughs> to actually send out the search party for you, know what the logistics of your trip are, exactly where you plan to be, when you should be getting to the trailhead, and when you should be returning, and when to call search and rescue and provide them with a number so they're not having to do that research themselves. On that same note of safety, the next tip is carry an in-reach or some sort of personal locator beacon. Whether you take a device that you can actually message back and forth on, like the in-reach or just send preset messages like the spot, or even just the one-time use personal locator beacon, having the ability to call for help from search and rescue if you were to find yourself in a terrible situation at least offers me some comfort and my family when I'm going out to the wilderness. Next, tip number five, be aware of your surroundings. 
Personally, when I am out on a trail, if I know there is a road crossing coming up or if I've just left the trailhead, I prefer to be at least three miles from the nearest trailhead or road crossing. I saw somebody on a Facebook post who said that she prefers to be at least five plus miles from the nearest trailhead or road crossing. So it's really personal preference, but the idea behind this is if somebody's gonna come down the trail looking for a camper to rob, you want them to have to really work for it, you know? And typically going out on trail and trying to find some hiker in the middle of the woods is not the easy target. It's not the low hanging fruit. Criminals want an easy job. They want to get in there and get out. So they're going to get you at the grocery store parking lot or, you know, somewhere that's easily accessible and they can quickly escape. So just having that buffer from the edges of society gives me comfort when I'm sleeping alone at night. Also in the same vein of being aware of your surroundings, when you meet people on the trail, I'm not saying you should fear anybody that you meet. I would say 99.8% of the folks that I've ever met on trail are absolutely amazing. There have just been a few that I get some off vibes from, if you will. But whenever I first meet somebody and in the first couple moments, they're like, so where are you going tonight? Where are you staying? They really might just be trying to socialize and just ask. I'm sure that I have not thought about it and asked somebody those same questions before, but I tend to not give those answers. You know, if we end up camping at the same place, great. But typically I just say, ah, I haven't decided yet or I hadn't really thought about it. I'm just going to walk until I feel tired. So personally, I just don't like to give that information out. Next, consider camping around others. I know this seems a little contradictory since I just said, don't tell people your plans, but I really do enjoy camping with other people. It makes me feel like there's less of a chance of wildlife busting up in there. Um, also, you know, a less of a chance of if there was some weirdo that walked in from a trailhead, you know, not running into any troubles like that. I mean, they're just, there's safety in numbers as the saying goes. But I like hiking alone during the day. I like spending time with my thoughts, with myself, on my own schedule. But if I'm on one of these busier trails like the AT and I can stop at a shelter location where I know there are gonna be other people camped out there, then that's typically the route that I take because I do enjoy socializing around a fire at night. Another tip is take precautions with wildlife, but don't stress it. Do your research and know what animals are the most dangerous to encounter for where you're going, but don't just obsess over every detail. You should know how to handle a situation should you find yourself dealing with um, a perturbed black bear, or if you're going to grizzly bear country or mountain lion country, or you know even just in an area that has venomous snakes. Knowing what to do if you are in the worst situation is a good idea, being prepared, but your chances of truly having a bad encounter with wildlife on the trail are just really not that high. And if you don't believe me, look up the statistics for whatever area you're going to and whatever animal you're most worried about. And I think that you'll probably see that it's really not anything to be worried about. <laughs> My next tip is set up camp before it gets dark. When I first started backpacking alone, I liked being able to set up my camp and look around at the area during the daylight and I got to watch as the sun went down and how things changed from the way they looked during the day to at night. And this helped me not freak out and think that the stump over in the distance was a bear. You know, I already knew it's a stump and it just helped give me a little peace of mind as I was laying there going to sleep at night. Now, once I got comfortable with it, I am absolutely fine now not hiking by myself, then setting up camp, and it just really doesn't bother me anymore, but it's one of those things that comes with time. My next tip is be selfish. It's pretty rare, at least in my life, where I can do whatever I wanna do, when I wanna do it, and not take anyone else's opinions into consideration. So when you go out on a solo backpacking trip, that is your chance to do just those things. You can eat what you want, when you want, you could zero in your tent all day or do as many miles as you could physically stand. And that's all just up to you. So I think it's important to soak in that time that we have alone with our own thoughts 
and having all that freedom. And finally, my last tip, tip number 10, is a leave no trace. I did say be selfish, but that doesn't mean that you should not take responsibility for cleaning up after yourself or the effects that you have on the wilderness. Because you're alone and you're the only one who is responsible for yourself, then that means you have to make sure you're really cleaning up after yourself and leaving it just as nice as you found it for the next hiker. All right, y'all, that is all I have for you today on tips every backpacker should know for hiking alone. I do just wanna end all of this by saying that I'm the type of person if I wanna do something, I'm not gonna sit around and wait on other folks to go with me. And I know that that can be intimidating. It was certainly intimidating for me that my first backpacking trip was a through hike of the Appalachian Trail by myself. But I met amazing people out on trail and it ended up not being near as scary as I imagined it would be. So I would just really encourage you, get out there even if it's just a few miles into the woods, set up, camp for a night, and turn around and come back to your car the next day. Because just from that short overnight trip, you're gonna gain so much confidence and realize that the caterpillar that sounded like a grizzly bear outside your tent was actually just a caterpillar. Thank y'all so much for watching, and if you found this video useful, feel free to share with a friend. And I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on solo hiking, so leave them below. And with that, we'll see y'all next time.